Um, I'd like to uh, show you this game that I had played at the time. I was rated 1601 and my opponent was 1574. And uh, I had played the uh, Nimsevich uh, Williams variation. I didn't even know such a thing existed. Um, I happened to leave the buck early because of what my opponent had played. Um, with that being said, there are um, there's a, a tactic that I'd like to show you called double check, and uh, I'd like to show you a couple of mating patterns as well. One it is a mate in six, and um, in puzzles I've never uh, been all that keen on uh, figuring out mate in six. But there was a mate in four that uh, I'd like to uh, show you as well, just for uh, interest sake. Uh, so without any further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. So this is the game I played. And um, I played the Nimzovich defense Williams variation. And it starts out as E4. Knight c6, knight f3, d6, nh3. Now my opponent had deviated from the uh, opening, but uh, if you wanted to continue in the opening, the next following moves, depending upon what you want to play, there are four different uh, uh, lines that you can study. Uh, first one is... Uh, Pawn to e5. Uh, we have pawn to f5. Knight from g8 to f6. And of course g6. As the next uh, moves in the opening. And um, uh, if you go to a online, online database. Um, I'm quite sure you could uh, figure out uh, lines that you'd like to play. But this is just. Uh, continuations into the book. Unfortunately, my opponent didn't play that. And the game continued. And um, I was kind of going for uh, Scandinavian defense here because I thought, well, if I attack the queen, then I'll get a tempo. If the queen goes back up, uh, which my opponent did, And uh, here I opted for bishop e2, and my idea was I wanted a castle, kingside. Uh, my computer uh, suggested uh, this move instead, pinning the knight to the king. And uh, with this move e6, I was assuming that my opponent might come down and also pin my knight. My computer had recommended that uh, I could also play uh, my bishop to g5 and now I've pinned both knights to the king and the queen. Uh, my computer had thought that maybe uh, coming down to pin my knight would be uh, a good thing. And then uh, perhaps bishop c6 check would be played. And uh, this here is uh, a better move. I had gone into the line and I thought, well, what would happen if, let's say, my opponent played um, a6 and my light square bishop came down? Then I thought, well, then my opponent might play uh b5, pushing my light square bishop down, and the only side to this now is my opponent has um, has a bead on my light square bishop, so there's possibly an exchange of light square bishop, and that being said, it was just uh, um, the knight to a, 
uh, five, you know, attacking the light square bishop after all the moves. So that's why knight c6 is uh, recommended. So we exchange light square bishop for knight, and then uh, my computer recommended, then I could go ahead and castle. My opponent might come down and attack my dark square bishop, and then uh, it figured that uh, this move would be good, and uh, dark square bishop comes down, and uh, you know, I could come down with my dark square bishop here. If my opponent comes down to attack the dark square bishop, my dark square bishop does have a flight square, um, which uh, is the reason why my uh, computer had uh, uh, kind of recommended this as a interesting uh, move. So we'll go back to the original game. And uh, again, uh, my computer had perhaps recommended just exchanging the, uh, the, the knights. If my opponent does come down with a queen, I do have the pawn that comes up attacking uh, the queen. And we'll go back to the game. So this is the move that I had played and kind of made me a little bit nervous because I really didn't want to exchange queens. But at the same time, I wasn't quite sure what to do with the pawn. And now it's, uh, you know, each side, my, my opponent is attacking and I'm defending my pawn. Um, but my computer kind of suggested uh, bishop b5 instead, pinning the knight. And uh, had thought, well, perhaps my opponent might uh, decide to move the dark square bishop down, allowing the king to uh, castle kingside, defending its king, uh, their king. Uh, knight e5 might be played, trying to uh, remove the, the knight possibly, putting more pressure on the knight. And then uh, my opponent might decide to castle kingside. The knights get exchanged, and as a result, I'm attacking my opponent's uh, rook. The rook goes ahead to defend itself and my queen uh, develops and I'm defending uh, this pawn and um, these two pawns down here are uh, defended. Um, yes, because the rook is defending but also because the bishop is defending this square from my opponent's rook. And uh, my, opponent, my opponent might come down to, to develop the rook, which is defended by two pawns. Uh, it's also attacking my light square bishop. So you know, the light square bishops might be exchanged. No, they wouldn't be exchanged because the queen would just come up and take the rook, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, an exchange could happen on this side, though, but I'm not sure if that would be a wise thing to do at this point. But it's always a possibility, you never know. So we'll go ahead and we'll continue with the game. So 
So here I am going after my opponent's most valuable piece, attacking with a pawn, which is the least valuable piece. But my computer, instead of uh, going after the queen with the pawn, had recommended perhaps uh, rook d1. And the idea here is a discovered attack. Uh, so when the the bishop comes over to attack the king. The queen is hanging because my opponent would have to defend the king somehow. And then I could come and take the queen. Now that's, that's, that's called the discovered attack, which is a tactic. So to prevent that, my opponent comes down to defend this square here. And uh, here we have the discovered attack. I'm now attacking this pawn and uh, the queen is in jeopardy right now. So if my opponent decides to defend the queen someplace, I do have uh, the ability to take the pawn on b7, which results in a fork, which is another tactic. And I threaten both the rook and the knight at the same time. So perhaps my opponent would exchange uh, queens. And uh, then my light square bishop would be uh, chopped off the board. So uh, the fork wouldn't uh, happen. And... Uh, Excuse me, it's been a long day. Uh, my my knight might move to uh, h4. And I do have this attack here. So if the pawn comes down, uh, perhaps my knight would come up to take. If the pawn comes down, then I have the ability to capture my opponent's rook. And I think that's why my computer suggested moving the pawn here. As I said before, if my queen is here, if the pawn comes down, then the knight goes up. And I'm forking both the dark square bishop and the rook. And if the knight gets chopped off the board, then the queen just simply goes up and takes the rook. And the dark square bishop at that point in time is pinned, uh, defending this rook over here. So perhaps my opponent might play this move, which defends this square here. So moving my queen to check the king is not viable anymore. And uh, my uh, computer had suggested maybe coming up threatening to take the knight. So then I can move the queen here, threatening the king, and still have this uh, attack where I'm forking both the uh, dark square bishop and the rook. And like I said, if the pawn comes down, uh, then the queen just simply goes up and takes the rook. And the dark square bishop would be pinned uh, defending the rook. So the game continued. And I uh, decided to play this move. And uh, um, I am forking my opponent's knight and queen. But my computer suggested perhaps bishop e3 would be a better move. And uh, it um, it offers an exchange of uh, late square bishop for knight, and I am cutting off uh, the the king's ability to castle.
but not only that, let's say if I chop off the knight with my light square bishop, there is, um, yeah, even that wouldn't work. I thought maybe bringing the rook up here, checking the king, but then the rook would just come over, so that's not viable, but uh, even, you know, chopping the knight off the board and the pawn comes down, I am taking away my opponent's right to castle, and if my opponent decided that they still wanted to castle, but castle kingside, then perhaps a dark square bishop would come down in order to help facilitate that. And I don't think that I would want to exchange uh, light, uh, sorry, dark square bishops. I would hope that my opponent would want to exchange, so then the knight would come up, take the dark square bishop, and I'm forking both the queen and the light square bishop. Oh, great, I'm sorry, it's been a long day. I work nights, unfortunately. So my computer had, as I said, recommended moving the dark square bishop down. Uh, I might decide to just chop the light square bishop off the board, putting my king in check. So now uh, castling king side is not an option. Castling queen side is not an option anymore. Uh, so, my opponent would have to take the light square uh, bishop, and now kingside castle is um, possible. And um, now my computer had recommended then I can go ahead and I can fork the queen and the light square bishop. Uh, the dark square bishops might be exchanged. Then they can go up and take the queen, and the king comes down to uh, capture the knight that took the queen. So, uh, obviously, I believe I'm in a better position uh, than my uh, opponent. I have more space, I have more pieces that are active and uh, my king is, uh, not my king my opponent's king is kind of in a dangerous uh, position so the game continued And here I'm trying to set up a, a double attack by pushing the rook up here and uh, attacking the king, trying to get the, um, the rook exchange. And also here, uh, if I'm doing that, then the rook here is being threatened by my light square bishop. So uh, that's prob that was the idea that I was going for. Attacking the king, well, checking the king twice is, uh, no, I'd only check the king once. Sorry, I thought it, maybe it was a double check, but it isn't. Uh, but it is a double attack because I'm attacking the king and rook at the same time. Uh, so my opponent played this move and then I opted to play this move. Uh, now probably what I should have done is just move the rook up and I get into a double check. And the reason why it's a double check my bishop at this point in time would be safe, so I wouldn't have to move my bishop over. Uh, reason being is um, both the rook is attacking the king and the bishop is attacking the king, so the king must defend itself somehow. And, um, you know, if the king moves down again, 
perhaps, you know, check again. If the king moves down again, then perhaps I can take the rook. Might be an idea. But I, I didn't calculate that uh, well enough, and I was afraid that my light square bishop would be taken when, in actual fact, it was okay. So my computer recommended this move, and again, I'm forking the king and the rook. I have a double attack on my, uh, uh, sorry, double check on my opponent's king. So the king has to defend itself, so this uh, light, light square bishop is not threatened just yet. So the king moves out of the way, and now my late square bishop is under threat. So again, checking the king, and my opponent moves the pawn down, uh, perhaps, defending the king. And I just simply come over and uh, exchange rooks. And perhaps my uh, opponent at this point in time would uh, opt to uh, play along the dark squares for uh, protection against my light square bishop and it's a strategy that a lot of people employ and uh, it just makes your light square bishop very uh, weak um, it can be you uh, like the light square bishop really doesn't do anything anymore other than maybe help support pieces or if um, there's a pawn uh, threatening to promote you could always sacrifice the bishop since it's not really doing anything anyways and uh, just kind of use it like a lowly pawn almost uh, it can be used to um, block pawns as well and stuff like that and pawn pushes that might be another uh, idea for uh, for the light square bishop but uh, yeah generally if you have uh, a bishop on an opposite color as the king, um, you're pretty good. The light square bishop is uh, kind of uh, useless, in my personal opinion. So the game continued. And uh, playing this move my opponent didn't like very much, but I was afraid of this pawn push and the fact, too, that I can attack the king again. So my computer had suggested perhaps um, rook 1, e3. So it was on the first rank and went to e3. And um, if, uh, let's say, Instead of rook 1e3, let's say you were going to play this rook to e3, it would be uh, rook 6e3. Uh, uh, just as a, a side note for um, uh, recording moves, I did cover it once, but there were, there were a lot of things that I uh, missed as well. So my opponent might come down and play, I might chop the uh, the light square bishop off the board. Uh, ex and then, you know, they, we'd have a rook exchange. So uh, my opponent's down two pawns because the rook is worth five and the bishop's only three. So there's two pawns of material that I gained. Uh, perhaps my opponent would play this move. I know it does help to uh, just defend this pawn, but then these pawns are kind of uh, buggered as well. And uh, so my computer suggested me be coming up here. I'm taking aim at these two pawns since this one is defended. And I just have to be careful with this king moving around uh, to try to help support my, uh, my, my pawns. Excuse me. And the easiest way to do that is just simply this move. 
Um, that being said, if the king did come down, it's isolated to um, these these squares here. I can't move anything past the red. So the game continued. And I opted just to push the pawn because if my opponent takes, then I'll still win a rook. And I didn't think they were going to sacrifice a rook for a pawn. So uh, my computer really didn't like this move very much and had suggested maybe this would be a lot better. And uh, perhaps I was trying to figure out uh, uh, meat. And the only way that that would happen is if I push this pawn and then the rook up and over. But by that time, I have to be careful because this pawn's coming down to attack the late square bishop. And um, my late square bishop is taking away these two squares. But, um, yeah, so my, the only place now for this king to go is uh, this square here. And uh, I can't do that with a rook. So I'm not quite sure what the outcome would be. But uh, just going back, uh, after a depth of 46, it had uh, suggested that I would have a strong uh, uh, position at this point in time, and um, uh, perhaps a mate was in sight, but after 46 moves deep, my computer had a problem trying to figure out how to mate. I know I was having problems trying to figure it out. So the game continued. And I opted for this move to try to exchange rooks. And uh, my computer didn't like that very much and had recommended perhaps this move. And the reason why this move is good is because this is a discovered check. So all I'd have to do is move my bishop up, which attacks this rook. And my opponent's rook can't come over and take my bishop because it has to defend the king, so it has to move someplace. And then I just simply come down and take the rook. So my computer suggested perhaps this move taking away uh, this potential threat and uh, my computer thought well maybe rook b1 would be a possibility uh, with the idea maybe moving the pawn up uh, that being said my opponent can push the a6 pawn attacking my light square bishop but that's not all that great either because if the pawn takes and the rook comes down and now it's a whole new can of worms as to how to uh, check this king or how to mate the king. So my computer recommended this move and I think because my opponent has to defend the king there's the possibility of coming up and attacking this pawn here. And there's also a possibility of me coming up uh, perhaps with the rook and uh, just kind of moving over attacking the king and uh, my opponent could in order to get out of it 
push the pawn down and then this pawn would come up and the rook would support the light square bishop I think would be a better option so the game continued and uh, instead of playing rook a8 attacking this pawn trying to get at my opponent's king my computer had suggested perhaps maybe this was better with the discover check and then I could win the rook but then my opponent would have to push the rook in order to defend its rook my computer thought that perhaps this would be an idea and I think the move behind it is just coming over here exerting pressure on the rook and now the problem is with the king uh, you know would I get into like a perpetual check maybe you know the bishop could come up here the king would have to defend somehow so if yeah so if I did come up here at checking the king this might be an option but then the rook comes over and attacking the, the king there would be the possibility to take this pawn uh, my computer suggested maybe attacking my king getting a tempo so I have to defend and uh, now uh, uh, my opponent might play rook b1 attacking the late square bishop but I believe I could win the exchange at this point in time so uh, again check so my king, not my king, my opponent's king would have to move. This is a uh, discovered check. The pawn comes down, defends the king. And now my pawn comes up and takes the queen. Uh, the queen takes the pawn and we have a pawn exchange. And then perhaps my opponent's king would come back trying to defend itself using uh, my pieces as a shield. So the game continued and I opted for this move but again my computer didn't like that and figured that perhaps uh, rook e3 was better with the idea of coming over attacking the king my opponent might take the hanging pawn I defend my pawn on a2 and also attack my opponent's king. The king would come down to defend and now my rook is being attacked and that being said I could just simply come over with my rook and attack my opponent's king again. But my computer had thought that perhaps maybe exchanging the rooks might be an idea. I'd be up a pawn so we have the rook exchange and I'm up a pawn and uh, my opponent might play this move um, just trying to defend well not defend any pawns this pawn is hanging but at this point in time what else can my opponent really do so we'll go back to the game and uh my opponent played this move and then I had played rook c1 which was something my computer liked and had suggested this move would be better just simply pushing the pawn up which takes away from this square from the king so now I'm controlling this square and this square this square 
with uh, my pawns. My opponent might come up and want to take the hanging pawn. I might go over and defend. Then the king might come up looking to attack my uh, rook on a8. And I just simply come over to prevent my opponent moving his king, but then perhaps we'd have a uh, rook exchange. And if that happened, then I think I just simply come down with the uh, late spirit bishop and I'd have a double attack on the king and the rook. So my opponent would have to move the king and then I would capture the rook. So I would probably win the exchange. So in order to avoid that, my opponent might play king a5 and uh, perhaps maybe I would uh, play bishop b5 recommended by my computer. Again, trying to take away squares from my opponent. So now checkmate is getting uh, kind of closer and it's kind of a dangerous, precarious situation to be in. And perhaps my opponent might play this move. I think the intent with this is coming over and taking this pawn, trying to add more defenders to my opponent's king. And now uh, if my opponent decides to play this move, then I simply come down and uh, I believe mate the king because the king can't move here. King can't move here, can't move here. So yeah, that would be me. Uh, so then my opponent might come over and uh, play this move. Maybe looking to exchange rooks. Uh, might be an idea. But I still have this threat here as well. Attacking the king, threatening me. So the game continues. I made a lot of mistakes in this game, as you can see. Uh, this move was played, and I opted for this one, which was a blunder. So my computer had recommended this move, perhaps would be a lot better. Attacking the king, gaining a tempo. And my opponent might take the hanging pawn on c4 and come up. I might come up and just cut the king off completely on the third rank. My opponent might decide just to take the hanging pawn on c2, gaining material. And here I check the king, uh, gaining a tempo. Perhaps I can push this pawn here up in order to defend my pawn. So uh, the king might move over, and I think the idea with that is move my rook over, attacking my opponent's king. And uh, again, the king moves up, and uh, the idea with is uh, trying to uh, threaten the king again, and uh, the king just simply uh, moves away. Uh, this square is defended, so then I can't uh, put my rook here. Uh, I have to defend my rook somehow, and um, my opponent is blocking this square, which helps defend my rook, so perhaps I would just simply move up and attack the king. Um, I don't know if my opponent's king would come down here, blocking my king uh, from escape squares with the threat of mate here. So the game continued.
So we have this move, and again, uh, my computer recommended playing this move, which might have been better, exchanging pawn for pawn. Perhaps then my opponent might play rook e2, cutting off uh, my king from the first uh, rank. But I can move up here and if I need to and maybe come over here. My computer suggested that perhaps maybe I would attack the hanging rook. And uh, my opponent comes up and forks both my light square bishop and rook. So we have a um, Sorry, we have a rook exchange. And then perhaps my king would come up, trying to come over here to defend from the pawn promotion. And now my opponent might come along here to cut off my uh, just to create a border so my king can't cross it in order to help defend against this pawn. So I have to make sure my microphone was on. Last time I did that, I muted the thing and halfway through I had to do it all over again. So every time now I check. <laughs> uh, so here I'm threatening my opponent's pawn and my opponent just simply comes down most pawn. So we have a lot of jockeying for uh, position, you know, attacking my opponent's rook. My rook can go, my opponent's rook could go down on the dark squares, making my light square bishop kind of, in, a, in effect, not doing very much, just standing around maybe waiting for this pawn to come down here and just chopping it off the board. So the game continued. And uh, we have this move here and I was going for a double check. Oh, well, not a double check, but I wanted to gain a tempo. so. I didn't know where perhaps to move. I do have, I do have a double attack, just by simply moving my uh, my light square bishop up, attacking this pawn here. So I'd win the pawn because my opponent would have to defend the king. So maybe there'd be an exchange of pawns, and if that happens, then my opponent's king is checked again my computer recommended this move as being the better move and I thought you know the idea here being bringing the rook over uh, attacking the pawn but then I can also come down and attack the king as well my opponent my computer thought might play this move uh, uh, trying to win the light square bishop And my computer thought, we'll just kind of move over and jam everything up. This rook here can't move anywhere because this pawn's being threatened. And we will, yep. So we'll go back one. This pawn's being threatened. So in order to alleviate that, we just change defenders, so now this rook can't go anywhere because it's defending this pawn, but we've mobilized uh, this rook here. I have to really be careful what I'm clicking or I might screw things up. And uh, again here, perhaps looking for a double uh, check just by moving my uh, bishop up and uh, attacking my opponent's rook and uh, 
you know, perhaps my rook could move over, uh, my opponent's rook could move over, but my computer had suggested perhaps this would have been the better move. You know, my, you could play this move if you wanted, but my computer recommends this move instead. So the game continues. And I opted for this move. And um, I thought this was really good because if my opponent comes down with the rook, then I just simply take the rook by my computer had like this move better attacking the hanging pawn because if the pawn pushes and my late grip oh no that's not right my rook is defending the pawn sorry my computer suggested maybe rook d4 uh, with the idea of my opponent could push the pawn putting pressure on my late grip bishop Perhaps me, no, can't win the pawn. I keep forgetting where my pieces are. My opponent, uh, not my opponent, I could come down, take the hanging pawn perhaps. My opponent perhaps could push the pawn, attacking my light square bishop. And uh, simply moving up, now we have an, a possible trade of light square bishop for rook. And uh, my opponent might defend the rook, and I just simply take the pawn defending my late square bishop. So this is how the game unfolded. As you can see, I made a lot of mistakes in this game. But that's why you go back and you learn about stuff like this. How could you have improved and what did you do wrong? So I'm coming up here attacking my opponent's rook. My computer suggested perhaps this move instead. Capturing the hanging pawn, which then in turn would put pressure on this pawn here. So my opponent might uh, decide to defend both pawns and uh, I think the idea with this move is coming up here trying to attack the, the rook trying to get uh, access perhaps to this pawn uh, my computer suggested that my opponent might come up and attack my late square bishop. My rook could possibly come down and defend my late square bishop. Sorry. And uh, perhaps my opponent would opt to play this move. And uh, perhaps I would take the hanging uh, rook instead. This move doesn't work because my opponent could come over here and the pawn supports the rook. And since I have double pawns here, it doesn't make sense to do something like that just to have your opponent come over and now doesn't have double pawns anymore and I have another threat to worry about. And then, you know, it just uh, a random move uh, not much that my opponent can do, you know, I could come up here, fork, uh, fork the pawns, but this pawn's going to fall because this pawn's defended by the rook. All these three pieces are going absolutely nowhere, so it's just, you know, my opponent moving the king and uh, these two pawns. And the game continued. So I take the rook, gaining a tempo. 
but my computer suggested perhaps this move might be an idea and uh, suggests this is mate in six. Uh, so we'll run through mate in six uh, just so we have an idea. So my opponent, if they play this move, what happens is the cutoff here. And a, uh, just coming down and taking the rook. So now the only viable square my opponent has is here because everything else is being taken away. So my opponent might opt to take my light square bishop, which really doesn't help because I still have this and this. But the king here is defending this square, so checkmate isn't going to come. If they move here, you just simply move the rook down and it's checkmate. So my computer suggested perhaps this move. But then again, my opponent's defending this square, so how do you defend? You only just simply come down with a king. My opponent might decide, well, I'll just push, which is fine. The king comes down, and the king might run away, and then you just simply come down, and we have, uh, we have checkmate, because the king doesn't have anywhere to go. And finding mate in six uh, is not uh, all that great, but it just kind of goes to show you how dire this game actually was when your computer starts uh, uh, calculating mates. So I'm not going to go through all the mating positions. I'll just go and uh, run through to the end of the game and I'll uh, show you the mate in four as well. So here I do have a mate in four. Uh, simply here the king comes up, blocks my opponent's king from coming up or coming down. This square is taken away. So the only viable square my opponent has is here. Just simply moving the pawn, there's not much to do. Check, king comes down to the only available square they have. King comes up, which allows my opponent to move their king again, but at the same token, it's a double edged sword because my opponent has to defend this square or else it's checkmate. King c2 comes down, uh, helping to defend this square, so now I can come down with a rook, and uh, just simply come down and checkmate, and My opponent has no viable uh, squares to go, and my opponent's king is smothered. That that being said, it's checkmate game over. There's no viable square my opponent can move to anymore in order to continue on the game. This is how the game can continued. So that's it in a nutshell. That's how it ended up. Uh, there, as I said, there were some tactics uh, I showed you a strategy, some mating patterns. Um, I know it's been a long one. If you've uh, continued on up to this point, congratulations. I do appreciate your time. And I really do hope that you uh, did uh, learn something here. And uh, just to show you, this was just a happy accident when I played this move. I didn't even know it was mate. 
but we'll just show the fact that uh, my opponent has uh, no viable moves left. And uh, that's why it's uh, checkmate. So please like and subscribe. Thank you for sticking around for this long uh, video. Um, um, I'll have more videos on the way. And um, I do appreciate all my subscribers for uh, helping support the channel. I really do appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.